Sachin, you've been in that jury meeting for over an hour now. What parameters did you use as an entrepreneur, as an angel investor to really gauge mm -hmm. uh, startups? So I was looking for uh, signs of uh, these companies becoming truly transformational and uh, innovative in the future. And uh, to me, that is uh, uh, that's the kind of role models we want to create for the for the future. And that uh, I was looking for which are the companies. So uh, the question that I was asking myself was, what are the companies that will become really transformational and become great role models for their uh, peers? Mm -hmm. And take us through your experience at the ET startup. So the experience has always been great. I mean, mm -hmm. this is uh, uh, this is second year. This is happening, and uh, uh, the. I mean, I have been part of other award events as well, and uh, the jury here is top class. I mean, absolutely, the great uh, collection of people. How do you think this is going to help the cause of you know entrepreneurship going forward? No, I think recognition is important. I mean, mm. we we sometimes get too busy with uh, just uh, doing our own thing and uh, and and not looking uh, beyond what what the impact that is happening, and this kind of gives us a chance to. Uh, step back, step back a little bit, and see what is the overall impact that we are having, how we are shaping the ecosystem. And I think, uh, I think what we are seeing is a huge transformation. And now this is the celebration of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a, and it's important to celebrate. It's important to create those role models and then showcase them to, uh, for everybody else. Right. What trends do you see in the startup ecosystem? You know, based on the nominations that you receive, the underlying trends that you see. So under, I think underlying trends are very healthy. Uh, there are there is a healthy venture capital ecosystem. Uh, there is a healthy uh, input of uh, or a healthy set of um, great entrepreneurs or great uh, good quality entrepreneurs coming out from colleges and, and starting up companies. There are people who are leave, who are uh, serial entrepreneurs who have started this uh, uh, companies as well. And uh, it shows that the ecosystem is getting healthier and healthier mm -hmm. every year. And we just need to continue on this path. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, we have still a long way to go from where countries like China, uh, US, Israel are. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, uh, I would say the trend is very, very encouraging. Right. And uh, any challenges that you see for entrepreneurs and you know, your advice to them on how they can tide over this season? No, I think uh, I think just keep your head down and execute. Uh, focus on the market and make sure that uh, that you understand your customers, understand your markets, and then just put your head down and execute. Uh, and uh, that's about it. And then rest of uh, rest everything gets taken care of itself, right? Yeah. Whether yeah. it's investors or uh, other uh, ups and downs that uh, are in the market, uh, they will get uh, they will take care of themselves over time. How does one really strike a balance in this and what would your own advice be for entrepreneurs? Can it really go hand in hand or do you need an ideas person and an execution person? So I think it's not either or. Hmm. Uh, it's a kind of a combination of both that has to work for, uh, uh, for, the, for the companies. Uh, idea, I would say, is only a very small start. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's only a very, very small start of the whole thing. And it's important to have the right ideas and the right uh, point you in the right direction. But once you have started on the path, it's all about execution after that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you say, right, success is 5% uh, inspiration and 95% uh, perspiration. Mm -hmm. and so that's, uh, I would say, it's, it's about execution, uh, execution, execution, execution after you've got the initial idea. Right. In terms of the ease of doing business, such and we've read your column on, you know, India's reverse Brexit, a uh, lot of encouraging things that you've said on GST. What else do you think uh, can be done and, you know, your own take on GST? Because IMAI seems to have slightly different views on the clauses for e-commerce marketplaces. So your own take as far as... I think if we don't go into the details of uh, every clause, of course, I mean, clauses, uh, uh, you know that, I mean, a lot of negotiation between states and centers is happening and that is leading to a lot of some clauses not being the most ideal. But I think even if even with all the shortcomings that we can, we, we can just keep focusing on shortcomings, but even with all of that, I think it's a great uh, thing that is happening. It's creating a first time and single market uh, Indi it's converting India into a single market for the first time mm -hmm. and it is uh, going to create opportunities for entrepreneurs like never before. Right. Uh, the state boundaries will become less important, it will be about uh, consumers everywhere, so consumers will become more and more center of their um, uh, attention for entrepreneurs and businesses rather than regulations and policies and stuff like that. So I think that's very important. So uh, to me, ease of doing business and GST is in that direction is is about providing access, market access uh, to entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And without 
and with less and less government coming in the middle of that mm -hmm. and it, it that's where uh, um, that's what i believe uh, ease of doing business in india in india should be about um, i mean today if you are a small uh, if let's say if you are a kid in iit kanpur dorm and you come up with an idea to transform healthcare in india if you go out in the real world and try to implement that, that idea it's almost impossible mm -hmm. uh, there will be so many regulations on data access on um, on what you can do what you can't do uh, we are seeing that with even with taxi companies and transportation companies they run into so many regulations and uh, rules and same with e-commerce companies and others as well i think internet companies and technology companies are pushing the bar pushing the boundaries of what regulations allowed them to do in the past and it's important for the government to make sure that uh, great ideas don't get killed Right. because of lack of market access right. because of regulations right last couple of questions really lot of debate this week you know after what we saw happening to uber in china if the in, if india protects its companies enough for you know it's too much of a level playing field uh, to the detriment of home grown companies what are your own views as far as this is concerned you know should status quo stay or should india perhaps give a chance to its home grown companies you know rather than encouraging us Yeah, I, I don't know the right answer. I think it's it's uh, it's up to the government to decide what is the right answer. They they need they are in the best position to take that call. But I believe that ten years later, um, if uh, India is uh, only a colony of uh, uh, American and Chinese businesses, mm. that's not good for India. Mm. We need we should have our own businesses. And uh, of course, I mean, a lot of uh, uh, effort has gone from the government side to. Do you see a danger of that happening? I mean, Sharad Sharma said, you know, digital colony uh, is almost inevitable. No, I, I think see, it, it, these things are very hard to predict. Hmm. These things are they, they play out in very unique ways and very hard to predict. Uh, there is no one size fits all. I mean, uh, in case of China, they have created their own ecosystem. Europe hasn't created its own hmm. ecosystem at all. Hmm. It's all American businesses and uh, over there. So it, we don't know. Right. but the thing is um um i i do feel that and i don't know whether government can play a role or not mm -hmm. in this also but we definitely should have indian companies uh large internet indian companies uh, coming out of india and uh, going to the rest of the world right lastly uh, sachin in your new role as you know chairman if you have to define 2016 for flipkart is going to be your of execution or you know consolidation because of the bomb coming into your fold how would you really define 2016 uh, and the role that you will be playing going forward I think for us 2016 is a year of turnaround. Okay. Um we have had multiple uh uh, uh turnarounds in the last <laughs> eight in or nine years that we have been here. And uh, of course I mean uh, at different scale of the business requires different uh, thinking, different solutions. And and on what basis would that turnaround come just to elaborate? No, I think uh, see it's it's we are changing gears from being a, a small startup small scrappy startup which was uh, um, uh, which would uh, be uh, which would just uh, uh, get things done mm -hmm. to being a high quality execution machine uh, which will uh, which will sustainably cre create markets and control markets and, uh, mm -hmm. and and create customer experiences that will be uh, highly differentiated mm -hmm. now that's uh, that's the execution machine that we're building and um, and i think i'm pretty confident i'm i'm very uh, very very confident about us being able to do that it's about just getting your head down and executing after you have decided what to do and that's what we are doing find us on facebook at facebook.com/etnow and don't forget to click the like button you can also follow us on twitter at @etnowlive to stay updated with all our programming hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel by logging on to youtube.com/user/etnow